Now that Apple's first M1 Max have proven to be a huge success, like I showed off in my one month review of the M1 MacBook Pro, it's time to talk about how Apple could handle transitioning the Mac Pro to Apple Silicon. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about a few different things like how much performance we should expect, how Apple can shrink the size of the Mac Pro chassis, how modular the new Mac Pro will remain despite switching to Apple Silicon, and my thoughts on the pricing and release date. So let's get right into it. When Apple first announced that they were transitioning their entire Mac lineup to their very own Apple Silicon chips, it was hard to imagine how Apple could pull that off with the Mac Pro, since it's meant for extremely high performance. But very recently, a report from Bloomberg claimed that Apple is currently working on various ARM-based chips with potentially up to 32 high performance cores. Now, if we consider that the current M1 chip has four high performance cores and it's pumping out extremely impressive performance numbers, a 32 core M series chip is gonna be mind numbingly fast. Now, I know that some people were speculating that Apple would be packing in multiple M series chips into one machine. Like for example, four M1 chips on one Mac but that doesn't make any sense at all. The goal of Apple Silicon is to reduce latency and increase efficiency as much as possible. And Apple did that by packing everything from the CPU, the graphics, and even the memory onto a single chip. Simply throwing in extra M1 chips would ruin the whole point by introducing extra latency. So Apple is much more likely to make larger and more powerful chips with more cores instead. Now on the other hand, graphics performance scales better with more cores compared to having a smaller amount of more powerful cores. That's likely why Apple is reported to be working on an 128 core GPU. But before I talk about how Apple can pull that off without messing with the unified architecture, I wanna make a bold statement that many of you might not agree with. I personally believe that the Apple Silicon Mac Pro will not support AMD or Nvidia graphics cards. Let me repeat that you will not be able to put a third party card into the Apple Silicon Mac Pro. And taking it even further, I personally don't think that any Apple Silicon Mac will ever support eGPUs because having an external GPU ruins the entire point of Apple Silicon and that is the unified architecture, like having everything built into one SOC. If you didn't already know, the Thunderbolt 3 cable currently used for eGPUs on Intel Macs are bandwidth limited. And on top of that, there is a massive amount of latency that gets created when the data has to travel to and from the CPU and the eGPU. For this reason, we've seen eGPUs with powerful graphics cards drastically slow down the performance of certain tasks like video editing compared to just using the MacBook by itself. And that's why I think Apple stopped supporting eGPUs because Apple knew that it would actually ruin the performance of the unified architecture. And if you really think about it, if Apple continued supporting eGPUs, they would essentially be admitting that their own custom integrated GPUs that they hyped up so much are not powerful enough for pro users. And that's not the impression that Apple wants to make. However, things on the Mac Pro are different because the Mac Pro requires much more graphics cores to satisfy the highest end professionals. So let's talk about that. According to that report that I mentioned from Bloomberg, Apple is developing two GPUs with 64 and 128 dedicated cores, which sounds insane. The M1 chip currently packs eight GPU cores built into the SOC. So packing in 128 GPU cores into one chip would make the main chip the size of a pancake which I don't even think is possible due to die size restrictions and other things like that that I don't fully understand. So because of that, Apple literally has to create a dedicated graphics chip separate from the main SOC, just like we currently already have on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But because this is the Mac Pro that we're talking about, 
Apple has to figure out some way to make it at least somewhat modular without sacrificing the whole unified architecture that makes the M1 Max so good. So here's what I think Apple is gonna do. You're gonna have a choice for your main SoC, which will pack everything from a CPU, an integrated GPU, and integrated unified memory, and all of the other components we currently have in the M1 chip. The base model will likely come with a 12 or 16 core M series chip, with the option to upgrade to a mid-range 20 core chip, and finally a high-end 32 core chip and all of them will come with a good amount of integrated graphics cores and unified memory as well. But thankfully, there's a good chance that Apple will keep the user replaceable RAM slots available for those who really need massive amounts of RAM, but the whole macOS system and simple tasks will continue to run on the unified memory to keep things feeling very snappy. Apple will also continue selling their Mac Pro SSD kits as well, keeping things modular. And you'll still be able to plug in audio cards and whatever else, but just not third-party graphics cards. So on that subject, let's get into how Apple could handle the dedicated graphics card situation. I personally think that on top of the main SoC, you'll have the option to add in one or two dedicated Apple graphics cards that you can plug in to the main board. Now because these dedicated cards aren't built into the SoC, therefore being less efficient, Apple could potentially come out with some sort of high bandwidth proprietary connector that utilizes PCI Express 4.0. Because yes, Apple has already confirmed that even the M1 chip supports PCIe 4. This connector obviously won't be as optimized and latency free as having the graphics integrated into the SoC, but the dedicated graphics chips will be used for tasks that require a ton of raw graphics rendering power. And the nice thing for Apple is that since they'll no longer support AMD graphics cards, they don't have to use the standardized PCI Express slots. They can use whatever connector they want and position it in any way they'd like to. And on top of that, they can now get rid of those extra power plugs on the motherboard that are meant for powering third-party graphics cards. This means that they'll be able to easily shrink down the Mac Pro's chassis to be at least 33% smaller, because if you think about it, they no longer need a huge 1400 watt power supply because the new ARM chips are extremely efficient. And by the time this Mac Pro gets released in 2022, the new chips will be on TSMC's three nanometer process, which by the way, Apple has already claimed. So these new chips are not only gonna be extremely fast, like industry breaking fast, but they're also gonna be incredibly efficient as well. Because of that, the Mac Pro will no longer need that huge of a heatsink for the CPU or those massive fans. They can shrink all of that down and still be completely fine in terms of cooling. Taking it even further, the Mac Pro doesn't need such a massive motherboard because their ARM-based designs are modern and optimized. The current Mac Pro has eight PCI Express expansion slots, and that's because their MPX graphics modules are massive, taking up double the space of a standard graphics card. Apple's dedicated custom graphics cards will most likely be able to fit in one slot, just like Apple's Afterburner card, which I believe Apple will also redesign to make it fit in the new smaller chassis. So therefore, Apple will no longer need eight PCI slots, maybe four or six tops, will be just fine, allowing Apple to shrink down the Mac Pro even more. However, I don't think that Apple's gonna make it two times smaller, like some people are currently speculating, because I think it's just gonna look funny, and it's gonna cause it to lose the powerful presence that it currently has. So I'm thinking that Apple will keep the dimensional ratio the same, but make it maybe around 33% smaller. Now you might be thinking that everything being locked down would really piss off a lot of Apple Apple's professional customers, but I think the performance is gonna be so enticing that many of them won't care. And in the worst case scenario, I'm sure that Apple will continue selling Intel versions of the Mac Pro for at least a year or two, 
after the release of the Apple Silicon Mac Pro. But in my opinion, that will be a bad choice for most people because the current entry-level M1 MacBook Pro is already faster than the 12-core Mac Pro for things like Xcode programming. So just imagine how fast an Apple Silicon Mac Pro with 32 CPU cores and 128 GPU cores will be while not taking nearly as much power and staying much cooler. So let me finally finish off with a few details that I can speculate on in terms of the pricing and the release date of the Apple Silicon Mac Pro. Apple did say that there will be a two year transition and based on how well the M1 Macs are performing right now, it's obvious that Apple can finish the transition sooner if they really wanted to. However, I think Apple already knew that the transition would be this smooth. So that two year transition isn't a guess, it's a release timeline. So I think that it makes the most sense for the Mac Pro to get released in 2022, because this will allow Apple to space out their lower end Mac releases, like the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the high end iMac before they finally release the Mac Pro. And if you're wondering when in 2022, I'm gonna go ahead and say December because of two very good reasons. For reason number one, I personally believe that Apple wants the Mac Pro's chips to be running on TSMC's three nanometer chip architecture, since Apple has already claimed all of the three nanometer supply two full years in advance. This basically means that the Mac Pro will only be able to get released after Apple reveals the three nanometer A15 chips for their iPhones, which usually happens in September. And for reason number two, the last two generations of the Mac Pro and the iMac Pro were all released in December, which is the perfect time for companies to spend the rest of their tech budgets right before the tax season ends so they can lower their tax bill. And as far as the price, I have a very good feeling that the Apple Silicon Mac Pro could easily start at a less expensive three to four thousand dollars and that's because the chassis will be smaller apple will be saving money on each chip they don't have to buy from intel and amd and finally apple won't have to pack overkill components like the 1400 watt power supply and the massive cooling system into each and every mac pro because they know that people will not be able to toss in a couple of power hungry RX 6900 XTs. Apple will have full control over every aspect of the Mac Pro, so they only need as much power and cooling as their efficient three nanometer chips will need, which in turn will bring down the base price of the Apple Silicon Mac Pro. So there you guys go. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you disagree with any of my speculations, comment down below and definitely check out my M1 MacBook Pro review right over there. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.